δεν ρώτησε κανείς, αρχορά μου. Εντάξει, πολύ αυτή. Τα καθίσματα θα φτιάχνουν για φυσιολογικούς ανθρώπους, όχι για δίμετρους, έτσι. Yes, we can start. Kalimera, uh, everybody, Kalispera. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, uh, our discussion today on sustainability in tourism uh, will be an interesting one, considering the fact that uh, the definition of sustainable tourism has been changed over the years from its humble beginnings of being just uh, uh, a recycling program to something more uh, specific and more scientifically based right now. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the meaning of uh, sustainable tourism uh, uh, has different meanings from based on the reports uh, for the consumers, the destinations and the tourism related companies. Uh, it, In most cases, the interpretation is personal rather than uh, based on, on facts. Um, uh, we do have a number of organizations now, fortunately, that uh, developed and offer sustainability standards, education and certification. Uh, and hopefully that will increase and that will be uh, more acceptable to the general public. The UNTO's uh, uh, definition of sustainable tourism is tourism that takes full account of its current, future economic, social, and environmental impacts, addressing the needs of visitors, the industry, the environment, and its host communities, which is a great uh, statement, but it's still a very generic one, and it leaves a lot of room for interpretation. So we're here to discuss all of this above. Um, we have the pleasure of having Minister Kikilas with us uh, today, uh, who's going to give us also a brief overview of Greece's uh, sustainability efforts and program. Um, Eleni Andreadi uh, is the Director of Sustainability for CSR and Sun for Sunny Ecos Group, uh, joining us uh, virtually as I do. Unfortunately, I'm not there. I'm uh, stuck here in Miami. And, um, uh, and also, she's an author of uh, a number of sustainability books. Uh, Dr. Ioannis Papas, who is the Director of Mediterranean Region of the Global Sustainability Tourism Council, DTCS, and, there's, you know, and also the co-founder of Green Evolution SA. And he is one of the people that works with the ministries and the destinations in developing programs. And he will give us his insight uh, on, on that part. And so there is Papa Costantino, who is a partner with Deloitte, expert in strategy analytics and M&A practice in Deloitte, Greece. And he's also taken a number of um, uh, participation in, uh, in sustainability studies and generic studies for, uh, for destinations. So he will give us that perspective. So Minister Tikilas, we'll start with you. The floor is yours, in Greek or in English? Well, I, I think it's fair to uh, speak in English. Uh, I'm so happy that uh, we meet again. Uh, thank you very, very much for the organization, for the kind invitation. Of course, you're in Miami, uh, but, uh, uh, well, I, I guess still at uh, the early start of, of December here, we have a pretty mild uh, weather. Uh, tourists uh, uh, along the center of uh, Athens, the Attica region, in branded destinations, and uh, a very, very successful uh, year. I think three billion euro above Uh, uh, earnings that were in the budget for this year. Uh, we will exceed 18 billion euros in, in revenues. But the, the big question, the million dollar question is, can, can, can we do it and can it be sustainable? Can we put in the picture a green and blue economy 
and uh, uh, find, find a way to be able to support destinations, to uh, diminish uh, carbon emission, to, act, to impose uh, policies that are actually friendly to the environment. What does that mean for the generations to come and for the future of the sector? I think the personal vision of the Prime Minister Kiriakos Mitsotakis to be able to push forward and uh, have, have politics that, are, uh, that we can see in our small islands, for starters, and uh, in our 16,000 miles of maritime borders, in our beautiful country, and the key factor of, uh, of uh, communicating that around the globe, and this is going to be our strategy and our communication strategy for two, 2023, uh, it, it's, it's very, very interesting. Because, yes, we are one of the top brands, top five brands globally nowadays in tourism. That's excellent news. It's a big part of our economy to find 25% of our GDP. Of course, we branded the country as a safe destination, dealing with the first waves of the pandemic. And now we're going to deal about how and what we do with our waste and the waste disposal and recycling, what we do with water in our islands, 124 inhabited islands, one more beautiful than the other in Greece. What do we do with the ban of plastic? Remember, Prime Minister himself talked about uh, minus 50 percent until uh, 2050. Uh, and what, what we do with uh, uh, energy, energy, unfortunately, for all the wrong reasons, we've got a war in the heart of Europe after 80 years, uh, inflation uh, uh, and, and unsta instability, uh, it's center spot. Will we push forward and uh, use renewable energies? I think we should. I think we, we are going to. Yes, it's costly nowadays, but it's our future. It's the future of our planet, and it's the heritage that uh, we, we give to the next generation. So if Astipala is now an island like that, a small island in the south and eastern part of the Mediterranean, and Halki is also, and Twin is doing it with collab with uh, Governor Haji Marcos and Nas in Rodos, and also, in, in a way, Naxos II and Syros, and uh, if in the, the, the last big uh, WWT in London we sign uh, with a great company for, for, for the joint effort to diminish plastic in our uh, seas and in our shores in our municipalities. Uh, I, and if we push forward with the private sector also, giving uh, the right economic tools in, in order for them to upgrade energetically their hotels and their resorts, uh, I, I think that we're on the right track. And uh, we should take into account, and I will finish with that for, for starters, that one out, one, out, one out of the two travelers from 2023 and on will travel if the airline carrier has a program of low carbon emission, will come to a country if they expect ecology and the environment, will come to a beach or a municipality if they see clean beaches without plastic, will go to the resort or to a hotel if they have programs and it's visible uh, in, in respect to the environment. This is definitely not uh, fashionable. It's not something that we see, we're going to see for a year or for a season or two. This is our destiny in order to be able to preserve our way of life and to support the planet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Eleni, we will start with you because um, uh, I'm going to award that tourists would rather forget at this point, and that's COVID-19, obviously. Uh, COVID-19 gave us a, uh, a, well, it forced us actually, and it sometimes gave us an excuse to suspend, reduce, change uh, a lot of our sustainability programs and truly put sustainability on the back burner for the last two years. Uh, now, this, uh, now, obviously, which is mostly behind us, uh, most of the programs are back on track, or at least they seem to be back on track. But there's also a lot of uh, criticism, I would say, or question mark, or whether companies, uh, hotels, cruise lines, or even destinations are still using that excuse to, uh, to not put the sustainability programs back. Can you give us a little bit of a perspective on that? <clears throat> Hi to everyone, and I'm really sorry that I'm not, uh, due to my traveling schedule, that I can't be there. Um, 
It's true that COVID pushed back uh, a lot of plans. I mean, we were seeing this, that uh, companies that had issued year after year sustainability reports, hotel groups, um, weren't publishing them over the, the over that period. And what's interesting is that we saw the opposite with, um, with travelers. We saw an extreme interest and a further demands from potential travelers uh, and this across the board we've seen the the studies reflect this of um uh tourists wanting more wanting more sustainability uh better sustainability performance from our sector as a whole so it's an interesting paradox there and um i i believe that um despite the covid um uh extreme crisis in our industry um the the, the incentives are uh, are all aligning towards that direction. So we're seeing, you know, at least uh, in Europe, the the uh, EU Green Deal. We're seeing, um, I mean, I just mentioned uh, tourists or our guests are asking uh, and more and more uh, intricate and detailed feedback that we all know uh, we can't, uh, we get immediate feedback on, on TripAdvisor, on our uh, online questionnaires, uh, on, uh, extreme details such as plastic use and where are the solar panels and all these sorts of things that I'm I can tell you with confidence as uh, that we're we're certainly seeing so a lot of detail a lot of questions around our sustainability performance at the same time we have banks offering incentives as part of the EU green deal uh base and tied uh, we were the first company to take out sustainability linked loan tied to KPIs that have to do with sustainability so we're seeing uh, we're seeing investors certainly are looking at this. So everything's aligning in that direction. We mentioned also energy costs, uh, and uh, that's a that's an added consideration um, to get us moving much more uh, quickly to uh, to net zero and to um, uh, carbon neutrality, etc. So um, I think despite COVID and the and the huge setback that that did cause to a lot of sustainability programs, even though there were a lot of companies that sort of doubled down on it, it has to be said. I think that it's not something that's, uh, I think it's definitely back on track and it's led by and, and pushed by so many different directions that it's it's definitely uh, here to stay. Okay. Uh, speaking about consumers now, if, if I, uh, uh, Ioanni, uh, you work with, uh, uh, OTAs and uh, the tour operators in, uh, uh, in some of the program sustainability, uh, how do they affect or how can they affect more efficiently? And what's your opinion on that regarding the uh, their uh, uh, their involvement in sustainable tourism and their their influence on that? Yeah, thank you very much, first of all, for the invitation. It's glad to be here. Um, I suppose that and we see that in our programs, actually, uh, we see that globally, that all the big players have decided to go to that direction. Sustainability is not just a decision, it's part of their DNA right now. Everyone is, uh, is developing programs based on strategic planning. They have strategies in place, the big ones at least, uh, about 2030 or even 2030 plus. So everyone are aligned on the concept that sustainability should be inside in their programs. Uh, in addition, because there are criteria inside this business, um, they are introducing all these criteria and they are trying to connect this criteria and certification that they can achieve on, uh, based also on using and collaborating with, with uh, actually with um, uh, all the stakeholders of the supply chain of tourism across the world. So think about Booking, think about uh, actually Expedia, think about um, even Google. Everyone is putting right now in their system how we can uh, describe sustainability based on what criteria and which certification and which uh, matrices, KPIs. So everyone uses that language right now. Upon of that, of course, this is the connection that we call it market access with the, really the, the travelers, because now the travelers, if you see right now, for example, in booking.com, there are around 400,000 entities that have described some kind of good practices related to sustainability, not only certified, but also simple good practices. So the traveler now 
have the tool how they can search about, let's say, accommodation or even um, some kind of um, a hotel or small, uh, let's say, site in order to visit. And this goes towards, of course, to destinations, but also to the whole uh, chain of uh, value chain of uh, tourists. Right now, the big trend is to create more criteria about gastronomy, about mice, about cruising. So all the parts of this chain are going to that direction. And for sure, this is not going to change. It's going to be more intense. And the challenge is going to be so much that every country should follow that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gikilas, just out of curiosity, because you meet with a lot of those uh, people from the tour operators and the online serve, you know, uh, agencies, do they bring it up? Do they, do they actually uh, talk to you about sustainability to the destination? Well, you they, meet they, with they them? Totally, they, uh, I've met them in Paris, in the, in the Big Fair, and then after that in London. They're, they're totally compatible with that. First of all, if we, we want to talk about specific politics, we did sign with Google. They've already uh, rescaled and upscaled uh, their education programs together with 2,000 hoteliers already in Greece in terms of uh, sustainable tourism. And also, we got a new uh, weapon which I think will help with uh, DMMOs and uh, local municipalities. That means that giving them the opportunity to understand what the modern, modern tools of counting, measuring, or, or finding politics that are going to be green and blue, sustainable, uh, are. Uh, you know, people don't have to know. But if they're eager to, to, to learn, you, you go to assist them and help them understand how we can transit, how we can push forward and evolve from, from, of course, we're going to keep our traditional framework. There's no doubt about that, but give them the opportunity for more to be visible in, in bigger parts of the traveling industry in terms of, of green and blue economy and sustainability. Thank you. It's interesting. It's interesting. Just to go back to Eleni for a minute, uh, because she you know, looks you know, from the industry perspective, uh, back when the health protocols were put in place or security protocols were put in place, we would get a lot of push from, let's say, the airlines or the cruise companies that they house people in, in, our, in our hotels to follow those guidelines. Do you have that now from uh, the tour operators and the, uh, uh, and the others when it comes to sustainability, Eleni? Well, we still have our protocols in place, but I think it's safe to say as we're returning and fully rebounding, I mean, globally, with the exception of China and some parts of Asia, you know, to uh, a sort of pre-COVID uh, travel p tourism picture, I think uh, in, in, in the countries of our main markets, normality continuing more people socializing in events, we, we see, uh, obviously, we see a, a completely different and less of a focus on that nowadays. Thank you. Uh, uh, so, Lori, uh, you are the, uh, the organization that helps and, uh, and studies uh, destinations, develops program for them. Uh, uh, let's move to the consumer side, because I think that's a big challenge. Uh, yes, uh, the others and uh, everybody else that moves uh, the masses, it can influence a destination but the individual consumer thinks different. Can you give us a little bit of an idea what, how the, the consumer moves, uh, trends, uh, uh, any statistics, anything that uh, you can share with us? Sure, thank you, Tim. Uh, it, it's, it has been already mentioned by Minister Kikilias, by Ms. Andreadis, that the, consumer, uh, the consumers are putting a lot of, of emphasis on sustainability. Every recent research and study from uh, Booking, from Expedia, our own Deloitte Global Consumer Tracker that we publish every other month. All this research uh, converges on the emphasis that consumers put on sustainability. And, of course, that's applicable also to travelers. There are many statistics that prove that. 90% consider of travelers consider sustainability uh, as a very important factor. Almost, if I remember correctly, 75% uh, when they choose a destination, they factor in sustainability issues and how credible the destination is. Also, what is important to mention is that 
Gen Z and millennials show an even more focus on sustainability. Uh, having said that, we need to, to see that there are other pressures and challenges right now in the, uh, in the global environment. So whereas sustainability is a primary focus, there are issues around uh, financing, so consumers are worried about how uh, their financial status will evolve, in, uh, related to inflation, of course, uh, the energy prices, etc. But what we see is that still sustainability is very high on the agenda. So what, uh, what is the ask from the destination, but for companies as well, is to balance the, the different aspects. So far, I think that sustainability is uh, on, on the in sustainability products and offerings, both in tourism and in general, are in the uh, beginning of, of the life cycle sector as products. So it's quite new, new innovations need to begin in order to be more affordable. To the, so cost is a barrier and a challenge that I need to overcome. Similarly, availability should also improve uh, and also, it's a matter of trust and credibility, which comes also to Mr. Papa saying that uh, companies, destinations need to, to prove with hard data, with specific KPIs, uh, their sustainability, their efforts, uh, in order for consumers to, to be certain that uh, the choices that may, they make, the options that they make are truly sustainable, and this will create uh, a, a virtuous cycle around create more demand for sustainable products, more affordable uh, sustainable products, more transparent sustainable offerings, and this will uh, create benefits for, for the value chain of tourism. Thank you. Uh, uh, so you, your company did a, the study on Astipilia for, uh, uh, for the ministry. Uh, is there anything, specific, you know, uh, anything that you can share with you of that, that that has to do with the sustainability? I know it was a more general study, but anything that specifically that we would you would like to share with us by any chance? If I can give my opinion around uh, our national context and at the destination level context, I think that as Greece, we we have the basics right now. We have the commitment of the government of the stakeholders. We have a, a climate law based on the Green Deal. We have specific financial instruments in place. Right now, I think that we need to even uh, have a more, uh, I would say, detailed roadmaps, I would say more, bo both sectoral, and I believe that uh, there are also regional in place and under development, but I, I would say that we need also sectoral or sub-sectoral uh, uh, roadmaps for, for more sustainable, for the decarbonization, yeah, with the likes of, for example, the Jet Zero for, for the aviation, like a program of Jet Zero for the aviation of the UK. On the other hand, I think certifications and accreditations and uh, labels, as Mr. Papa said, is, is very important. And of course, the initiatives that are uh, taking place, as uh, Minister Kikilias mentioned, in specific destinations, specific islands, those add to, to, the, to, the, uh, to, to the whole sustainability issue. And uh, those initiatives are very important. Waste, energy, water, to make uh, Greece a place to, better for, to live and to visit, which is, the, I think, the, the aim of sustainable tourism. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Ioanni, uh, if we leave Greece for a minute uh, uh, out of it, uh, I know you, you personally and your company works with uh, a lot of uh, ministries, a lot of destinations, uh, on sustainability programs. Uh, can you give us anything, uh, any examples of, uh, of uh, successful programs or successful practices that, uh, that you can share with us? Yes, um, many of the things that we're doing, we cannot actually say that we're doing sometimes. That's there are right. many countries. Uh, for example, we're working very close with Norway for many years. There is a program over there. Uh, we're very close with many countries around our area. Of course, in Asia, it's a lot of uh, more, let's say, activity like uh, in Singapore now, a, a great program, a national great program is taking on their ways. 
Uh, however, we have very close, a very, um, let's say, pro ex exclusive, let's say, program which comes from Turkey, actually. Um, the Turkish program is under, let's say, a pilot phase, but uh, in the next mm, weeks or months, it's going to be released. It's going to be an integrated national certification program uh, from bottom to, to, let's say, to, to the top. Uh, it's going to include everything, and it's going to be a very good example how, let's say, a global organization is recognized in order to run a national program together with the, with the government in order to provide and connect the dots. You see now we have all the OTAs, the customer, we have the national program, we have uh, the entity. So this is, this is the way that things are going. Uh, and this is a very good example I can share with thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Uh, I, we're going to have a little bit more time. Mayor uh, Sekikiyas, uh, I have to ask you this uh, question uh, and, and for you to be uh, to close uh, our panel. Uh, Destination is just not a destination without uh, local governments, uh, you know, the, the hotels, uh, cruise lines, uh, transportation companies. Uh, is there an ask from you to them about uh, uh, to help you with the sustainability efforts? Well, f first of all, uh, they're not charity organizations. And, and I understand that everybody is in for the, for the profit. And this is the, the, the name of the game and, and, and the rules. But I think that they are only, also interested in keeping the biggest part of, uh, of, of the industry, uh, the traveling industry, uh, which, which is which sustained you know, a lot during COVID and uh, has, has been proven to be you know, real strong. So we're working with them, also with green, uh, uh, Greek uh, airline companies and with uh, uh, tour operators globally, and uh, we are optimistic. We are optimistic because uh, you know when there's vision, and there's strategy, and there's will. Yes, and difficulties, of course, also. But what is whatever is worth while team uh, has difficulties in front of the the, the actual uh, uh, effort. You, you, you take uh, you know all the burden. You, you keep on pushing forward, and uh, finally you have a breakthrough. And you see a transition to, to a next era, to, to, to a, uh, an evolution of, of the sector, which is a, a key factor of, of, of it being able to keep on growing. So sustainability is, once again, not something that you're going to see for one season in the touristic industry or two seasons. It's here to stay and, and, and for the right uh, reasons. And, 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 and you, team, has, uh, have reminded us, uh, I don't know, now with uh, the backdrop that I see, Tom Cruise <laughs> in cocktail, eh? Yes. It's all cocktail bottles. From, okay. uh, I mean, uh, cocktail shake for all the years that I collected. But uh, I have to conclude, but I do have to say that the destination is that by itself. And I think uh, the industry, uh, the companies involved in tourism, and uh, the local uh, communities need to uh, also put an effort in, in, in the sustainability effort of the destination. So thank you very much, everybody. And thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.